Hi, my name's Dan Keane and welcome back to the channel, particularly those of you who might have subscribed having seen my Compose a Piece of Music in 45 Minutes video. Really pleased to see that you're enjoying that content and I definitely will create more of that in the future. Today I'm going to be doing a sort of part two of a poll that I did about two months ago, I think, where I said, do you want to see how I make sample libraries or my recommendations for creative plugins? And overwhelmingly you said how I make sample libraries. And I made that video, it's available up above and down below if you haven't seen it already. Today I'm doing part two, I'm gonna show you the 15 plugins that I use every single day or pretty much every day. Now the reason I'm making this video today is because I recently upgraded from my 2015 Apple MacBook Pro to my 2018 Mac Mini and there are lots of reasons why I got this computer but mainly I just needed more RAM and more processing power. I'd reached a bit of a ceiling point with this MacBook Pro. Now I will do more content in the future about the Mac Mini because I think it could actually be really great for people who are sort of looking to do slightly higher quality productions or maybe slightly kind of busier projects. Um, I think the Mac Mini is absolutely great but again I'll test it over the next few weeks to let you know what I think. So I'm going to split this down into three main categories. There's going to be creative, mix and mastering and I'm going to leave timestamps to all of the plugins as well as the links to the various plugins as well so that you can sort of zip around the video if that's what you'd like to do. So I'm starting with creative because that's sort of what I use to make the various sounds that I make, to make my sample content, things like that. On the mixing side of things, EQs, compressors, reverbs, stuff like that, the things that are going to sort of get you across the line when um, when putting projects together. And then finally on the mastering, this is the stuff that you put right on your master bus on the way out, um, just to give it a little bit of a commercial edge. So this isn't so much as a tutorial. I'm very happy to go more in depth in the future into how I use compressors and EQs and things like that. But today I'm just going to sort of give you a quick list of the various things I use. I'm going to preface all of this by saying that if you buy the Sound Toys 5 full bundle and the Fab Filter mixing bundle, I'd say you've already got most of the plugins that I'm going to show you here today. I use a few Waves plugins and a couple of other companies as well, but Fab Filter and Sound Toys have become such a strong staple for me. Fab Filter more for the kind of mixing, the more I'm going to use an EQ now, whereas Sound Toys is more on the kind of creative side of things, and I'll show you some of those plugins as well. The first plugin I'm going to show you today is actually a Sound Toys plugin, and it's called Echo Boy. And I'm sure many of you have seen this plugin before, but this is the setting that I tend to use, and it just works great. If you set the feedback right to the sort of three o'clock position and have your saturation on the Memory Man setting, it just sounds amazing. and you can just leave that going. Now you've also got some settings that you can adjust as well. This wobble sort of affects the pitch if you want something to sound a little bit sort of psychedelic, um, but all in all, just an absolutely fantastic plugin. Next on this list is Native Instruments Guitar Rig 5, and this is what I would use as an amp simulator. If I'm ever getting a guitar out, I'll be using this. I would like to have my own amp here in the studio at some point, but I don't have one at the moment because I don't really need one. Um, it's got a great selection of amps and cabinets, but the thing I really like is the echoes and distortions. I find that I can put really anything through it and it sounds musical and it's got a huge selection of presets that can get you out of jail if you just need something that's a little bit different and a little bit unique. The next plugin I want to show you is Decapitator, another Sound Toys plugin, and I really, really like this one. I don't tend to use the punish button very often, but it is there. Now, I tend to use this on a more kind of dark setting, um, and I've got a Wurlitzer loaded at the moment. If I turn that off now... So it's not just sort of boosting things, it's giving it that warmth that um, sounds really natural. Now I also use this often on drums, and I'm just going to show you a mix that I've got here at the moment. Um, I've got several plugins loaded that I will talk about later in the mixing phase, but I just want to show you this while I'm still on this plugin. I use this often as a snare microphone as well. So if I turn this off and then turn it on. So here's the snare. And then with, it just adds like a sort of high end fizzle that I really, really like. Um, I also use it as a sort of side chain option as well. Again, I'll show you more, more of these plugins later. It just 
just really kind of gives you that extra punch. Now, sticking on the Sound Toys front for a moment, I'm going to show you the Little Plate, which is a plate emulation reverb. And I really, really like this plugin because it has an infinite reverb setting. So at the moment, I've got my The King's Upright linked down below if you want to download that for free from Piano Book. This is a piano and it's got this pad blend in there as well. And basically the whole point is, You can just let it go and it sounds really really natural really really creative okay let's move away from sound toys for now i want to show you this selection of free plugins by michael norris and this is just fantastic i really like the spectral emergence um really really simple you can kind of play around with things i don't really know what a lot of these do you might um, but i certainly don't i've mentioned this on the channel before it's just really good so at the moment i've got my piano loaded again and now i'm going to add this plugin just a little bit creative, a little bit unique. If I take this off and then have this sort of blended in underneath. That's not really a fair test because I've already got a pad blended in underneath it, but it just helps to sort of add that slight sort of TV drama side to a fairly normal sounding piano. Finally, on the creative side of things, I'm going to show you the Saturn 2 plugin by FabFilter. Now, they recently updated this to Saturn 2, and I really, really like this. It's basically a multi band saturation distortion plugin. Um, it works really, really well. You can sort of emulate tape, amp, tube, saturation, transformer effects. It's got loads of stuff, and you can sort of just create new bands if you want them. Um, and then they each have their own settings with various crossover. I actually use this to process my drums. I'm a big fan of people like Eric Valentine, who you've probably heard of, but they use um, a lot of this Saturn range and I've been really kind of enjoying this. So I'm gonna show you this Saturn plugin on, um, on a kick drum and I'll show you before and after. So this is before. And then with. What it does is it just sort of ramps up those upper frequencies. You can use this as an EQ plugin, so you can sort of boost certain frequencies if you like. Um, but this is just a way for you to really sort of ramp things up. If I sort of play these lower frequencies on a loop. It just sort of, it just sort of ramps things up a little bit. You can also use this on keys and guitars. This is a plugin that I haven't had for very long, but I really, really like it so far. Okay, we have to talk about reverb. And first of all, I'm going to show you the reverb that I use for more sort of orchestral pieces. And it's this. It's the East West Quantum Leap Spaces reverb. I've used this a lot. I tend to use Berlin Church most. And if I just chuck this on... just sounds great. Another one that I use quite often is this planetary manifestations and is this really long one. Now for me, when I'm using orchestral material, I will always be putting it through the Quantum Leap spaces. I recently tried the FabFilter Pro R that's also my kind of 
go-to reverb of choice these days. And it's a much more kind of accomplished reverb. But what I like about the Quantum Leap Spaces is that as it's a convolution reverb, it sounds like the room that you're placing it in. And for me, at least, if I'm combining it with tree microphones from orchestral recordings, I just find that it tends to work a little bit better using a convolution. If I were buying a reverb now, having not had this for what, 10 years nearly, um, I'd probably go for something like the Outer Verb 7. I'd say that probably has uh, more choice and it's also a convolution reverb. In terms of my algorithmic reverb of choice, it would be the FabFilter Pro R. And I'm gonna show you how I would use that now as well. The thing I like about this reverb in particular is it's just so good at all the things. You know, it's got a great default setting. It's got the huge spaces like the black hole reverb, which is 20 seconds. Then it's got the nice smaller spaces. And then it's just got a really, really nice default setting. I blend this in. I also really like their UI. It's really simple. You can see what it's doing um, and you've got a little bit more control as well. Something that's really great about the algorithmic reverbs. I also like that you can sort of hover over something and it tells you a little bit about what that does. It doesn't pretend that you know loads about what it's doing. So it's quite nice to see like, what is a decay rate? And then you can get this little pop-up that comes up. While we're on the FabFilter train, I should show you the Pro Q3. This is something I've been using for about, about a month now and I just really, really like it. What's really cool is not only is it a graphic EQ, so you can see what's happening, um, but you've also got like unlimited notches, so you can sort of pull things out. You've got a brick wall EQ, which is actually pretty unseen. I mean, even even down to like 96 dB per octave, that's that's really, really nice. And then you've, you can just do loads and loads of things um, if you want to. I mean, you don't get this on most EQs at all. Um, so really, really impressive. And of course, you've got your controls there. The thing that I really like as well is that you don't have to have it set to stereo all the time. Sometimes you can have it just affect the right side, just affect the left side. Sometimes if I've got a stereo, uh, if I want to create a stereo recording, but from a mono source, say a guitar or something, sometimes I'll take the lower end and sort of boost that on the left side and then take the upper mid range and boost that on the right side. You've also got this dynamic range, which you can increase here, which just sort of, when it hits that, it boosts it. So that's that's a nice feature to have in there as well. There's loads and loads of stuff that you can do in here and it's also got quite a few presets as well. So I would really highly recommend the Pro Q3. Next, I want to talk about the SSL Suite by Waves. Now, I've been using this for years now. Um, both the SSL channel and the G channel are great channel strip plugins if you want it to have a console sound. Whenever I go into a studio that has an SSL desk, I just fall in love with it a little bit more every time. And as far as I can tell, this sounds pretty similar, um, if not kind of identical. So it's got a four band EQ here. You've got your high cut and low cut filters, and then you've got your compressor and your gate there. So it's really, really good for drums, guitars, keys, things like that, bands in particular, and I use this a lot on vocals as well. It also includes the SSL compressor, which I use a lot on drums and other kind of percussive elements. I think it reacts really, really well to that. And then finally, you've got your SSL EQ here, uh, which is similar to the channel strip as well. My compressor of choice these days is the FabFilter Pro C2. I really, really like this. It's got a particularly aggressive sound on drums, but can also be really gentle on things like brass and strings. Um, and you've also got various different styles here that it emulates. And it also has a really nice sidechain feature as well, which works particularly well on drums. If you want a more stylized approach, I would opt for the CLA Classic Compressor Suite by Waves. I really, really like this. It has the CLA 76, the 3A and the 2A. So I'll show you each of them now. So this is the uh, this is the 76 and this works really well for vocals and voiceover. That's what I use to compress the vocals that you hear on my voiceovers. And then I have the 3A, which I use a lot as a sort of drum, sort of parallel compression bus. If you just turn this all the way up, it just obliterates anything in its path. And then finally for the 2A, 
I use this a lot as a string bus and I've um, spoken about this be before but it's got a really nice gentle attack so it's quite forgiving to sort of more gentle sounds and it has some really nice presets as well which I use particularly the strings preset I think sounds really good. Finally on my mixing side of things I'd recommend this the radiator by sound toys this is particularly good if you're taking like a DI bass sound and you just want to warm it up a little bit you want to give it a little bit of that natural crunch I think this setting works really really well for boosting that low end and sort of taking the high end I don't know this there's, there's like a little bit of a notch in the middle but I think it sounds particularly good on bass guitars. Right I'm finally just going to show you what I use on my master bus and it's this We've seen this plugin already. I use the uh, SSL compressor by Waves. I have this set to a three millisecond attack, an auto release, and a ratio of four to one. I tend to have about two to three dB of reduction. I don't tend to compress too much on the way out. The next thing I'll have is by Waves as well, and it's the J37 tape machine. Now this is particularly nice if you just want to give it a little bit of an upper mid-range crunch. I'm also quite uh, interested at the moment by the Abbey Road vinyl, but that's much more of a kind of stylized sound. And finally, uh, I use this L3 multi maximizer. I think this is one of the best limiters around, and I'd really recommend the L2 as well. I tend to have this compressed to about minus five, and then I'll use the L2 just to boost another kind of one and a half dB to cut out just below zero. Finally, there's just a couple of plugins that I want to mention that didn't really have a place in this, but just wanted to mention them. First of all, the LFO tool by Zephyr Records, I think it's how you pronounce it. This is a tool that sort of allows for that slight sort of sidechain compression. You've got really nice control of your transients, particularly if you're in the business of creating more sort of hip hop records. Then this isn't very romantic, but it's the PAS frequency analyzer. If you're mixing music and you're selling it commercially, you need to know that your room sounds sort of translatable um, to other systems. So this is really good just to see where you're at. This is a free plugin uh, called Mutomatic. And I really like this one because basically what it does is it mutes a microphone while you're recording or while you're stopped. So it's particularly good if you've got like a talkback microphone that's really, really blasting when the drummer's hitting hard during the recording, but then you need to be able to hear them afterwards. And there are so many times when you're recording between one room, you're in the in the live room and you've got somebody else in the studio and you're trying to talk to them, but you can't hear anything because um, the talkback isn't engaged. To, so this is a really, really nice plugin and it's free as well. Finally, this is another plugin that I'm interested in. Uh, this is actually just the demo version, but it is, it is free as the demo version and it's called Virtual Soundstage. And what it allows you to do is move your sound source further away into a room. So it's not really a reverb plugin. You'd sort of apply this first and then you'd add your reverb after that um, and it sounds really really good if you're recording in small rooms and you just want to create a little bit of distance I think this works really really well the difference between the demo and the full version is that it doesn't remember your settings when you've closed the project so you can use this as much as you want but as soon as you sort of end the session that's it it's all it's all gone Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be useful. Maybe there are a couple of little plugins here or there that you haven't seen before. Again, they're all available down below. So if you want to check them out, do. Um, one final thing to mention is if you haven't seen already, I've created a Patreon channel. Um, the link will be at the very top of the description down below. I'd really, really appreciate it if you would join me on there because there's lots of unseen content that I won't be putting on this main YouTube channel. And it enables me to continue creating this content for free on YouTube in addition to this unreleased content on Patreon. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next one.